Hey, what's going on? Sir Blackson 97 here, back with our deck profile. Today we'll be profiling the Ice Barrier deck, post Battles of Legends, Terminal Revenge. Probably one of my favorite archetypes, especially from the original Freezing Chain structure deck. Just a ton of fun dispensing out synchro monsters and water monsters. Plus, with it being a super hot summer, I figured everybody could cool off a little bit with some Ice Barrier. So, consider this a two birds with one stone, or two birds with one glacier, sort of tidying up. So... Without further ado, let's grab our tuners and jump into our Synchro Monsters. As is tradition, we'll be starting with the extra deck, and in particular, Lancia, Ancestral Dragon of the Ice Mountain. Requires a water tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters, up to twice per turn and once per chain. If your opponent special summons a monster, you can special summon an Ice Barrier monster from pretty much anywhere except the Banish Zone or Banishment, and then you can turn one attack position monster your opponent controls into defense position. Just a nice way to protect some of your ice barriers that are hitting the field. And if this ever leaves the field because of an opponent's card, you get to special summon an ice barrier synchro monster from the extra deck. This is treated as a synchro summon. Definitely a nice one-up for the deck, though you can certainly bump it up to two if you really just want to get the maximum amount of ice barriers floating around or just proper synchro summoning. It's unfortunate it's an ice mountain instead of an ice barrier card, but it absolutely does everything you need to do for the deck. Just dispensing synchro monsters or just ice barriers in general. Now moving on to the actual ice barrier monsters, we'll start with one copy of Brionic, one copy of Duloran. Both have similar returning cards to the hand function, so we'll kind of cover them at the same time, starting with Brionic, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Generic synchro, you can discard any number of cards to the graveyard to target the same number of cards your opponent controls, bounce them back to the hand. Obviously eroded after the original, you can just return anything as a nom once per turn, so it is limited towards our opponent, but if we just really want to clean out the field, absolutely can do that thanks to Brionic. But if we want to do some self-bouncing, that's where Duloran comes in handy as the Tiger King of the Ice Barrier. Same summoning conditions, although the non-tuner needs to be a water monster, can target any number of face-up cards you control, return those back to the hand, and this card gains 500 attack until the end of the turn for each card returned, by this effect. So this is just basically two sides of the same coin. Brionic just kind of clears out your opponent's stuff while discarding cards, and Duloran just bounces all the cards back to your hand for a nice little attack boost. A different flavor of discard and destruction is Gungnir, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. A bit more of an optional tech, but it is nice just to keep Frozen Domain out on the field as well for our counter traps. Gungnir, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Pretty generic. Again, just needing waters for the non-tuner. Once per turn, discard up to two cards to the graveyard to target the same number of cards your opponent controls. Destroy them. Obviously, a little bit close to being like an archetypal Icarus attack, but obviously not being a trap or activated on our opponent's turn. But again, just a nice way to discard stuff to clear out the field if we need it. Two copies of Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. This is definitely one you want to run a few more copies than just one, as it's a still non-once-per-turn effect. Requires a tuner and two or more non-tuner monsters. When it's Synchro Summon, banish up to one card each from your opponent's hand, field, and graveyard. The one in hand is chosen at random. Even just going first, where you only will be really messing with your opponent's hand, this is still just a fantastic effect, just being able to clear out the field, snipe some cards away from your opponent's hand, and just keep your plays going from there. It's also a pretty fearsome boss monster on its own, being at 2700 attack. But if you feel that's not enough in terms of firepower, you can always go into Trishula, Zero Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Same summoning conditions. When it's Synchro Summoned, banish up to three cards your opponent controls. This Synchro Summoned card's owner's control is destroyed by an opponent's card. Special Summon a Trishula from the Extra Decker Graveyard. Its attack becomes 3300. Then have the attack of any face-up monsters your opponent controls and negate their effects. It's unfortunate that the Trishula it floats into isn't a proper Synchro Summon, but... Being able to just Forbidden Droplet your opponent's field, cut their monsters down by having their attack, and then turning Trishula himself into a 3300 beatdown card is still pretty nice at the very least. Although technically not really an Ice Barrier card, it's an Ice Dragon. We have the new Brionic, the Magical Ice Dragon. Still a generic Synchro. If it's Synchro Summon, discard a card to target a card on the field, bounce it to the hand, if it's best summon from the graveyard, do the same thing. Discard a card to target and bounce back a card on the field. We can use this to target our own stuff, so Brionic is back to bouncing our own cards, which is nice. 
Both effects, though, are a hard month per turn, so different flavors. Again, if you just want to run Dulorin just to kind of help out with some of the other Ice Barrier support, by all means, so feel free to bump that up to two copies instead of just one Brionic Ice Dragon. Moving on, we have Coral Dragon, nice little Synchro Tuner. Still generic Synchro, once per turn, discard a card to target and destroy a card our opponent controls. If the Synchro Summon card is sent from the field to Graveyard, we get to draw a card. Nice way to, again, just kind of like Gungnir, discard a few cards, start popping stuff on the field, and it also lets us draw a card once it's sent from field to Grave. Regardless if it was destroyed or used as more Synchro material, which is ideally what we'll be doing with Deep Sea Prima Donna. Generic Synchro, your opponent cannot target a Synchro monster that uses this card's material with monster effects. We also can only use each of the following effects once per turn. Target one of our opponent's banished cards, add it to their add to our hand, or special summon a level 4 or lower water monster from deck. And if we do, we, our opponent gets to add that target back to their hand. So it's a nice way to incentivize them not hand trapping us. Just make sure the banished card you target isn't something that's going to come back to bite you in the behind later on. But still being able to just grab a water monster from deck and either put it on the field or just grab it to hand. It's always a nice little addition. And if this card is sent to the graveyard, we get to target a banished card and shuffle it back into the deck. White or Whale. This one has a myriad of effects here. Both the tuner and non-tuner need to be water monsters. When it's synchro summoned, we get to destroy our opponent's attack position monsters. Gets to make up a two attacks on monsters during each battle phase. Gets piercing damage. And if it's destroyed by an opponent's card and sent to the graveyard, we can banish one of their water monsters to special summon it back as a tuner. So a nice myriad of effects here. Nice little mirror force for our opponent's attack position monsters. Two attacks on monsters, piercing damage, and being able to come back as a tuner. What's not to love at the White Aura Whale? One copy of Ad Emancipator Risen Dragite. Generic Synchro. It's a rock this time, but again, we're pretty much just locking ourselves into water monsters or synchros, or a combination of both, so this still fits the budget pretty well. During our main phase, we get to excavate the top five cards of our deck and return cards our opponent controls to their hand up to the number of excavated rock monsters, and then place the excavated cards on the bottom of the deck in any order. We're not running any rock monsters, so the secondary effect is really what we're utilizing it for, which is when our opponent activates a spell or trap or effect while a water monster is in the graveyard, quick effect, we get to negate and destroy that card. Nice little spell and trap negation, which comes in handy, especially considering, again, everything in this deck is a water monster, so this effect is pretty much almost always live. Ravenous Croco Dragon Arcathiz, nice generic synchro. This one especially comes in handy with their new tuner, which pretty much sets it up nicely. Gains 500 attack and defense for each card in the hand. If it's synchro summon, we get to draw cards equal to the number of non-tuners used for its synchro summon. Also, quick effect, we get to discard two cards to target and destroy a card on the field. As mentioned before, their newest tuner monster, Mirror Mage, pretty much helps set this up nicely by creating a bunch of tokens. Has its own level change, so Arcathiz will be able to give you a ton of cards once it hits the field. And then from there, you can just discard it for other Ice Barrier effects, continue your plays, or just use it for his own effect to discard and then pop a card. Up next, we have Ice Jade Gamir Agreen. One water tuner, one or more non tuner monsters. Quick effect, we get to activate this effect. Face of monsters we control cannot be destroyed or banished by our opponent's card effects, especially the banish protection, that's super nice. Then if we activate this effect in response to our opponent's card or effect activation, and our opponent has a card with that same name on the field and or in the graveyard, we get to banish those cards. If a card is banished by our opponent's card effect while Agreen is in the graveyard, we get to special summon her back to the field. What's nice is she doesn't banish herself when she comes back from the graveyard, so as long as we're able to consistently and properly synchro summon her first, she'll always be able to return back from the grave and then protect our monsters from being banished as well, which is pretty much the big counter to her is just banishing her out from the graveyard. As long as we're able to keep her out on the field or just get her back from the graveyard before the call by the grave hits, we're in a pretty good spot. And then finally, rounding out the extra deck lineup is Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Chen Ying. Say that five times fast. Generic Synchro, for each banished card, it gains 100 attack and defense, and monsters our opponent controls lose 100 attack and defense for each. If this would be destroyed by card effect, we get to banish a card from the graveyard instead. If a card is banished, except during the damage step, we get to banish a card each from our opponent's field and graveyard. 
just kind of more of a uh, win more synchro. It is kind of nice to protect itself from card effects and the stat manipulation does come in handy, especially if you're running Pot of Desires, that becomes a nice 1,000 attack and defense boost for Chen Ying and a 1,000 attack and defense reduction for our opponent. But it's also nice to just being able to banish stuff from field and graveyard. So it does carry its utilities, but for the most part, the level 10s we're focusing on are mostly summoning Lancia or Gamir Agarine. Moving on to the main deck now, we're going to start off with our tuners. And what better way to start off than the main man himself, Mirror Mage of the Ice Barrier. It's a nice little level 2 for us. We can tribute one other effect monster to special summon up to 3 Ice Barrier tokens. They're level 1 with 0 attack and defense. And if we do, we get to increase this card's level by that number. And we get locked into the extra deck for the rest of the turn, except for Water Synchro Monsters. If this card is sent to the graveyard, we get to add... One of our Ice Barrier cards is banished or in the deck back to our hand. So this kind of pretty much covers all the bases we need. Generates a bunch of tokens. We can pretty much make a ton of synchros and anything we really need at that moment in time. Especially like Trishula, Arcathiz. If we have enough stuff on the field, we can easily go into Lancia and then move it in from there. It's nice that it does recover stuff from the Banish Zone. So it does cover kind of the one area Lancia does not as well. Up next for their new tuners, we have two copies of Georgius, Swordsman of the Ice Barrier. While we control another Ice Barrier monster, our opponent cannot activate monster effects in the graveyard. If we have an Ice Barrier monster on the field, we get to special summon it from the hand in defense position. If it's a normal special summon, we get to special summon a level 5 or lower Ice Barrier monster from hand or graveyard. This being level 6, we'll primarily target our level 4s, so then we can immediately go into Lancia or Gamir Agarine if we've already put our Lancia out onto the field. It's also just nice being able to lock down the graveyard, which comes in super handy, and being able to just easily summon itself so it's not too much of a brick, but I feel that two is a pretty good amount to run, but if you want to bump it up to three, by all means. Up next from the Freezing Chain Structure Deck, we have two copies of Hexaspirit of the Ice Barrier. While we control another Ice Barrier monster, monsters our opponent controls lose 500 attack and defense. During the main phase, we get to send a level 3 or lower Ice Barrier monster from deck to grave to then change this card's level to that sent monsters. So it's a nice little way to just kind of reduce our opponent's stats. Nice little level 1, so it is a 1 for 1 target, or just dropping it down by Lancia. And also being able to Foolish Barrel any of our stuff and change its levels, it truly is a pretty nice spirit. Primarily what we're targeting with that Foolish Burial effect is Defender of the Ice Barrier. While we control another Ice Barrier monster, monsters our opponent controls cannot declare an attack if their attack is greater than or equal to this card's defense. So it's a nice little floodgate when used in combination with Lancia. Especially if our opponent has stuff like Link monsters, we can't really change their battle positions. This just kind of helps lock down them from attacking altogether in one way or another. Moving on to the non-tuners, we have three copies of General Wayne of the Ice Barrier. Spells and traps sent to the, from the field to our opponent's grave are actually banished instead, which is nice. If our opponent controls a monster and we control an Ice Barrier monster, we can special summon General Wayne from the hand. If normal or special summon, he can fetch us an Ice Barrier spell and trap from deck to hand. A bit of a brick as well in the same thing as Georgius, so if you just want to run two copies, that's also pretty nice and a smart decision, but being able to search for a bunch of their Ice Barrier spells and traps, I feel like General Wayne is pretty acceptable as a three of. Plus, we're able to pretty much grab anything we need thanks to Medallion, so however many copies you feel like you should run, it's probably a correct amount. Up next, we have three copies of Revealer of the Ice Barrier. While we control another Ice Barrier monster, our opponent cannot Tribute Summon. Nice little shutdown for the Flu Wanderies matchup. We can also discard a card to summon an Ice Barrier Tuner from deck, any level tuner, so unlike Hexa Spirit, it's not really limited to like level 3 or lower Ice Barrier Monsters. Revealer can just grab any tuner. So that's another reason we just run two Georgius, as we can immediately grab him straight from the deck thanks to Revealer. We get locked into Water Monsters for the rest of the turn, but that's not really an issue. As again, with Mirror Mage, we're pretty much sticking to the Water Synchro train, so not big of an issue for us. And if we would discard a card or send a card from hand to grave to activate an Ice Barrier Monsters effect, we get to banish Revealer from the graveyard instead of one of those sent cards. So again, we don't really have to worry about any of the discard stuff for like Gungnir, Brionic, 
we can easily just banish revealer as well to make sure our hand stays replenished and refilled. Up next we have speaker for the ice barrier. While we control another ice barrier monster, defense position monsters our opponent controls cannot change their battle positions. If we have an ice barrier monster on the field, we get to special summon this card from hand and we can banish it from the graveyard to special summon an ice barrier token. What's nice is we can use pretty much both the effects on the same turn, so easily get out speaker, use her for a synchro summon, banish her from grave, make our little token, and if we just so happen to have Lancia turning a bunch of stuff to defense position, we can use her effect to kind of just lock down our opponent's monsters altogether. To kind of help unclog our hand in case we ever get hit with too many high-level ice barriers like General Wayne, Georgius, or if we're also running General Grunard for the extra normal summon, Zuijin kind of helps us out. It's a level 2 warrior, so it is a Rota target in addition to Medallion. We attribute it to special summon a level 5 or higher ice barrier monster from our hand. If it's in the graveyard, except the tournament was sent there, we get to target a level 3 or higher water monster we control, reduce its level by exactly 2, and then special summon Zuijin back from the graveyard, but banish it when it leaves the field. So again, this just kind of help us unclog and unbrick our hand with all some of the higher level ice barriers we have, specifically Georgius and General Wayne in this deck, but again, General Grunard's a nice little option if you want that additional normal summon. Up next, we have Ice Jade Ron Igreen. Its name becomes Ice Jade Cenote Annoying Cradle while equipped with an equip card. What we're also looking for here is we can discard one other Ice Jade card or just any water monster to special summon her from hand. Then we get to special summon an Ice Jade token, level three with zero attack and defense. While that token is in the monster zone, Pretty much like Sword Souls, we can only special summon water monsters from the extra deck. It's mostly just, again, using like stuff like Synchro, so a little bit different than the traditional Sword Soul of just locking you into Synchros. But again, we're pretty much just making Gamir Agarine purely off of Ron's effect. What is nice is it's any Ice Jade card, so some of those spells and traps you may have filled up with your hand, you can also discard them. Or just any water monsters as well to, again, unbrick our hand and at least continue making plays. She is level 7, so combined with that level 3 token, we are made able to again make Lancia or Gamir Agarine through her as well. Moving on to the spells, we have three copies of Medallion of the Ice Barrier, pretty much a reinforcement of the army for the whole archetype. Nom once per turn and an Ice Barrier monster from deck to hand. This is just fantastic. Absolutely run three of these. It's just a great way to pretty much give you three more copies of whatever you're looking for in particular. Mirror Mage for those tokens and tuners. Georgius, if you already have an Ice Barrier out on the field and you just want to get that level 6 out for more Revival. Revealer, just to grab those tuners. Speaker for more field presence. Pretty much any Ice Barrier you need at that moment in time, Medallion will get it for you. Up next, we have their Continuous Spell, Freezing Chains of the Ice Barrier, pretty much named after the Structure Decks, Freezing Chains. When it's activated, we get to target a level 4 or lower Ice Barrier monster in the graveyard, Special summon it. While we control three or more Ice Barrier monsters, they don't have to be different named, they just have to be three Ice Barrier monsters. Ice Barrier monsters we control are unaffected by the activated effects of our opponent's monsters that were special summoned from the extra deck. This is just, again, putting a hat on a hat, being able to really just protect our stuff after we have established a full board. As long as we have three Ice Barriers, we can really just shut down our opponent, especially with stuff like Lancia, any of the other ice barriers like Georgius locking down graveyards, General Wayne being a macro cosmos for spells and traps, having freezing chains to just make us unaffected by special summoned extra deck monsters from our opponent is just a nice little cherry on top that really just solidifies the deck. Definitely want to run two of those. Another one you can consider running two of is Winds Over the Ice Barrier, although for this one I'll just be running one. Tribute any number of Ice Barrier monsters to special summon from deck that many level 4 or lower Ice Barrier monsters with different names from each other during the main phase, except the turn was sent to the graveyard. We get to banish it from the graveyard to target one of our Ice Barrier monsters that is banished or in the graveyard, similar to Mirror Mage, we get to add it back to the hand. So this also helps cover any of the gaps from Lancia by also recovering some of the banished stuff so that he can immediately start special summoning them from hand. I know you may be thinking, why ran Igarine kind of floating around in the main deck? Well, we do have a way to search her as well, so she's not too stuck in or trapped in the main deck. They also have their own reinforcement in the army for Ice Shades, and much like Medallion, it's not a once per turn. Ice Shade Cradle, we're running two copies, lets us add an Ice Shade monster from deck to hand with a different name 
from the cards we control or in the graveyard. So since we're pretty much just running two copies of Ron, we only really need to focus on just a couple of cradles, but again, it just helps us make at least some form of a play, or at least helps us get out into some of our bigger synchros. It's just another way to help set up Gamir Agarine or even Lancia. And if we do happen to already have a Ron Igarine, we can just discard any of the extra cradles to then special summon her back from the hand, as again, we just need to discard an Ice Jade card. Up next, we have three copies of Upstart Goblin, just to kind of help thin through the deck and also unclog our hands and excavate for some of those big playmakers like Mirror Mage or Georgius. But again, Pot of Desires is a nice little tech choice if you want to turn Chen Ying into a 4,000 attack and defense beatdown card as well. Two copies of Salvage, target two water monsters with 1,500 or less attack in the grave, add them back to hand. This covers a ton of cards in our deck, Unfortunately, stuff like Georgius and Revealer are a little bit higher on the attack side, so they may not qualify for this, but being able to recover stuff like Speaker or Mirror Mage or even Hexa Spirit for more Foolish Barreling is absolute must for Salvage. Again, it's not a once per turn. It helps us recover stuff from the grave, and it kind of helps justify all the discarding we'll be doing with Ice Barriers as we can just recover them back to hand. Obviously, to ensure our plays, we have a few board breakers here to really ensure consistency and making sure our plays go without a hitch. That being primarily three copies of Dark Ruler No More. Negate the effects of all face-up monsters our opponent controls currently until the end of the turn. Also, for the rest of the turn, after Dark Ruler resolves, our opponent takes no damage. What's also nice is neither player can activate monster effects in response to this card's activation. So it's a nice way to really play around some of the Omni Negates our opponent has. Just hit him with a Dark Ruler, shut down our field, and then immediately start making our plays, not having to worry about any of the on-field stuff. And if you're really worried about some of the hand traps, definitely stuff like Ash Blossom and cross Up Designator paired in there or Call by the Grave will absolutely help you out from getting pretty much sniped away or having your plays stopped short. Also to help out with breaking the board, we have Lightning Storm. If you control no face-up cards, activate one of these effects. We get to either A, destroy all attack position monsters our opponent controls, or B, destroy all spells and traps they control. This is just, again, a nice way to break through our opponent's board, especially after starting off with, like, a Dark Ruler No More. We can immediately just wipe out part of their field and continue making our play. So Lightning Storm is a great addition to really just shake up the board and let us get to spamming out Lancia. And then finally, rounding out the deck, we have the Continuous Trap, Frozen Domain of the Ice Barrier, as I mentioned earlier. Pretty much we're running one of every, at least one of every, Ice Barrier Synchro purely to help out this card. But it's also nice for stuff like Dularen and Trishula to get some time in the spotlight with self-bouncing stuff back to our hand or just ripping through our opponent's field in hand. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to the activation of Ice Barrier Monsters effects, which is a nice way to, again, play around some of those hand traps and we can still activate Lightning Storm. If this is on the field, it just needs to be face down first. What's also cool is if a monster is special summoned from the extra deck, we get to return to the hand or shuffle into the deck. An Ice Bear monster we control, then we can place one card from the field or either graveyard on the bottom of the deck. During the end phase, as is important with the Ice Barrier Synchros, reveal three Ice Barrier monsters with different names from the extra deck or destroy this card. So again, just being able to shut down our opponent and really make sure our plays go without a hitch. Definitely want to run two of these at least. Being able to just non-target put something on the bottom of the deck is probably a fate worse than, you know, getting tributed. So this definitely comes in handy. And being able to, again, work through that maintenance cost by just making sure we run at least one of every Ice Barrier Synchro just to make sure we don't end up losing our Frozen Domain too quickly. Or I guess in this case, having a thaw out. In any case, that'll do for today's deck profile. Hopefully I cooled you off a little bit with all the summer heat. But in any case, if you're still a little too hot or if you're already chilly and this is just, again, putting a snowball on a snowball, I apologize. But again, this deck is a ton of fun to just spam through synchro. So I had to profile this while I could. That'll do for today's deck profile. Thank you all for watching and I will see you guys next time.